Well, welcome to this very special CBN <laughs> prayer event. My name is Dan Andros, I'm managing editor at CBN News. And we believe in the power of prayer here at CBN. It's a focus on all of our programming that we do. We pray before our day starts um, and we just clothe everything in prayer because as Christians, we of course believe in the power of prayer. And so that's what we're doing here today with you all as well. We're gathering and giving us all an opportunity to pray for the people of Israel and everything that has gone on there. And uh, we're gonna be talking to our Jerusalem team with Chris Mitchell and Daniel Carlson. We'll be getting to them in just a minute, but uh, I'm joined today by Trey Gons Phillips, also of CBN News. And Trey, it has just been uh, unimaginable, the horror and the evil that we've seen unfold here in the past few days. Yeah, I think it's it's hard to watch what we've been seeing, but I think it's important, as we've said several times now on our the Quick Start podcast and then in other, other Israel coverage, it's important to actually look and see what's happening so that we can have an under, understanding of what's going on in Israel, uh, how our brothers and sisters in Christ might be hurting, uh, and then, of course, how the people of Israel are hurting, and even some Palestinians who are not responsible for these attacks, how they're hurting. So it's it's important that we come together and pray for the people in the Middle East because yeah, the atrocities unfolding are, are so horrific, it's hard to even put language to it. Yeah, absolutely. And as we always do on these prayer events, before we get praying, we want to give a little context and give some specific prayer points that we can be praying for. Uh, there's going to be some obvious clear things to pray for in this particular um, story that's happening in Israel and unfolding, but also maybe some that you weren't aware of. So I want to go to now our CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell, who's in Jerusalem, and he has been and his team have been covering this front since it began. And so, Chris, uh, thank you so much for taking a few minutes here today uh, with us to pray. Yeah, Dan and Trey, it's been quite a week. I mean, it began Saturday morning when uh, we here in Jerusalem heard sirens. And uh, and then after the sirens, you hear the explosions of the Iron Dome interceptors hitting those rockets in the air. But a little further south, about two hours, things were a much, much different story. That was uh, for several hours, Hamas terrorists came in, maybe 1,000 of them. They went into many of the communities, it's about 24 communities there on the border with Gaza. And they went in, they killed, they murdered, they maimed, they took hostages. And in the last days after Saturday, we've seen the effects of that. Uh, we've seen and heard of babies being beheaded. We've seen video of people being kidnapped in real time. Uh, we've talked to, uh, here in our studio, we talked to a sister whose sister has been kidnapped and praying for her return. Uh, we've hear, heard word, world leaders, uh, President Biden, uh, we've heard Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, we've heard those leaders around the world rally around uh, Israel right now. And so in many rallies in solidarity from Paris to London to other cities around the world, we've also seen the rise of anti-Semitism and pro uh, rallies, uh, actually, believe it or not, for Hamas. And so it's been a, 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 you know, a watershed moment for Israel and the Jewish people. The kind of terms they're using, Dan and Trey, are we've never seen this. This never been so bad since the Holocaust. And I think there've never been as many Jews killed uh, in one day since the Holocaust. Uh, they're comparing it to the kind of pogroms that would happen in uh, Eastern Europe or Russia you know, a century ago or more. Um, and so it really has shaken Isra Israelis to the core, the Jewish people to the core, no, no, not only here, but around the world. And so it's so important to be praying right now. And one of the scriptures that keeps coming to mind is Isaiah chapter 40, comfort, comfort ye my people, that the people that have lost their loved ones, that, that have lost their loved ones to kidnapping and now in anguish, or, what is their status? Are they being tortured? Will they ever come home? So to pray for comfort, I talked to an Israeli friend just a few hours ago. I said, how are you doing? And he said, we're broken. We're broken. We're devastated. And so that's the feeling. So, so many, so many Israelis here. And so what we can do as believers, as Christians, is come and stand with them in prayer and support them uh, during this time. 
Yeah, and Chris, what would you say if, you know, as far as obviously like what you just mentioned, we have prayer points for just the grief and the suffering going on. Are there any other kind of specific things you can think of just from your interactions with all the people on the ground as to uh, what we can be praying for? Well, obviously, as I mentioned, comfort. <clears throat> um, you can pray for wisdom for the leaders of Israel right now, the political leaders that are making life and death decisions uh, for the men and women that are on the front lines right now. And as you mentioned, Trey, for those innocent people in Gaza who really don't support Hamas and, and may be revolted by the images they're seeing in the streets of Gaza. Um, and I would also you know, mention this, uh, Bishop Robert Stearns was here in our studio a few days ago and he said, you know, how deeply this has affected the Jewish people. And he said, you know, you can also take an action step. And, and what he meant by that was if you have a Jewish friend, give them a call and encourage them and say you're standing with them, you're praying for them. Go to your local synagogue and, and encourage them that you're supporting them as well. So prayer and action can go together. And what you're doing uh, with this prayer call and uh, what CBN News is doing is trying to inform people, educate people, so they can uh, be informed and uh, and how the, and show how they can pray. You know, Chris, I want to ask you kind of a, a personal question. You're you're part of of our bureau uh, over in the Middle East in Israel. There's a team there working around the clock, kind of covering all of this stuff, and that's a heavy thing to do. How is how is the team there doing? The CBN team there doing, and how are y'all spiritually kind of preparing as you go in and, and mm. cover these stories because they are so heavy. They're very heavy, and it's a great question, Trey. Uh, first of all, I would say there's an amazing team. Here, I mean, I may be in front of the camera, but there's so many people behind the camera that make it happen uh, to do the videos, the lighting, the the audio, the the video, the going and getting an interview. I, I mean, it, producing uh, all, all sorts of tasks going on behind the scenes to make this all happen. So it's an amazing team that we have the privilege of working together. Uh, when Saturday happened. We just knew we had to do something. So we, we did three live, uh, I think, YouTubes and Facebook lives on Saturday, two on Sunday. We've done one each uh, since uh, since then, during Monday through here Thursday. We're actually, after this, we're gonna be doing our live YouTube and Facebook, but it's, it's not easy. Um, you're living in a war zone, you're living in a possible uh, rocket attacks. It's certainly a lot safer here than it is down about two hour drive from here, but you sense it. Uh, is Jerusalem is a bit of a ghost town now. Uh, many uh, people have closed their businesses. Uh, people don't go into work. Restaurants are closed, uh, most of them anyway, and a few shops do remain open. Uh, but you feel the kind of pressure and the intensity of what's going on. And you hear the grief and you feel the grief of our Israeli and Jewish friends. Uh, you know, on the 700 Club, we had a rabbi, uh, Yitzhak uh, Edelstein, standing here and describing what he was feeling. His mother survived the Holocaust, and he just, they was saying, you know, we never thought this was going to happen again. Well, it's happening again. And uh, so you feel that. So we appreciate prayers that we would have strength and stamina and the joy of the Lord in the midst of this uh, very sad uh, intense situation. All right, all good prayer points there, and uh, we'll pray here in just a moment. And um, I, you know, I think, I think for you guys, I mean that, and all media here trying to get this story out because, I, like you said, those Palestinian protests that are going on, the misinformation out there is it's unfathomable because even Hamas is trying to show how evil they are essentially, and then you have people trying to, you know. Uh, warp that message somehow. I, it's it's really mind-boggling how that's all unfolding. So uh, I think these are all great things to be praying for, that the truth gets out for for the anxiety to, to be eased and things of that nature. Um, and, and of course, for peace. So um, guys, I'm going to I'm going to start us off here and then feel free to jump in. Amen. And uh, and and we'll pray and we'll go around and we'll address uh, some of these things. So and you at home pray with us as well please join in. So let's go before the Lord. 
Mm. Heavenly Father, we just, again, thank you so much for who you are and your goodness in all things, Lord, and that you have a plan and a purpose uh, in spite of uh, the evil that we see sometimes um, in, in a fallen world, Lord, with full with uh, sinners uh, in need of um, uh, grace and repentance. So um, we, we just uh, lift up the people of Israel, Lord, to you today, and we um, just pray that you hear their prayers and their cries uh, for help, for peace, um, that hearts would be softened miraculously in this situation, Lord, that um, that justice would be done. You are a God of justice, and um, as we see these just horrible images coming out, and um, there are there are just so many things to be praying for, Lord, and I, we can't even in our finite brains think of them all, but I, first and foremost, just lift up the people of Israel, give them strength, mm-hmm. give them resolve, and uh, give them a heart to incline uh, towards you. Yeah, Lord, I'm 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 so struck. Whenever we have uh, situations like this, it's difficult to know the words um, to pray, right? To, to the things to say and the things to even ask of you uh, in our finite minds. But I'm reminded of of Psalm 61. It says, "Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer." Mm. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower uh, against the enemy. Uh, Lord, I pray that those words would ring true to our Jewish brothers and sisters, to our Christian brothers and sisters, uh, both in Israel and those uh, innocents uh, who who are, are facing uh, are facing danger because of the evil that Hamas has carried out, because of the evil uh, of this world, Lord, I pray um, that you would be a refuge to those people, Lord, that you would be a refuge to our uh, Jewish brothers and sisters in Israel, that they would know uh, that that you, you clothe uh, the valleys, you clothe and care for the birds of the air. How much more do you care for us, God? I pray uh, that they would be reminded of your sovereignty, that we would trust uh, in your uh, ultimate plan of redemption, Lord, that nothing happens outside of your purview, uh, that you are in control and that you are faithful in the midst uh, of of all things, good, bad, and indifferent, and even in the midst of unspeakable evil, you are still God and your story, your ultimate uh, desire for redemption cannot mm. be thwarted, Lord. Remind us of that today in Jesus' name. Yeah. And Father, you see your people that are traumatized, that are broken, devastated, uh, even even those that may not have been directly affected. It's almost here in Israel like a family. So somebody knows somebody that knows somebody. It's just rippled through the psyche and the soul of the Israeli population and the Jewish soul around the world. So we do pray for that supernatural comfort, that supernatural peace that only you can bring. And Lord, we pray for wisdom for the leaders, for the political leaders, the military leaders. They're literally making life and death decisions right now uh, that will change the course of this situation and maybe the course of history. We pray for the leaders around the world like uh, President Joe Biden and other leaders, we pray that they would rally around Israel. And Lord, we pray that you would um, save even the people there in Gaza. We pray for protection over those innocent people. And Lord, we know that there are many Muslims who really have come to faith in Jesus because of a dream or vision. So we pray even more that you would visit uh, people with dreams and visions and bring them to yourself. And uh, so, Lord, we just pray that as well for CBN News that we could be an instrument in your hands to bring truth and accuracy uh, for such a time as this, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Trey, for that. And um, man, it's uh, just listening to those prayers and listening to the things we're praying about. The Lord's arms are not too short to save. And mm. so, Chris, when you bring that up and you bring up those dreams, it's uh, a, honestly, it gives me chills because I know God's going to do mighty and incredible things mm. in the midst of this. He, he always does. So, um, and I know CBN News is going to be the first ones to find those stories and to bring them out. So, Uh, In the midst of this tragedy, I look forward to seeing how God's going to work and restore uh, all of this. So I appreciate those prayers, guys. 
All right, we're going to bring in Daniel Carlson now, who's CBN Israel National Director. Daniel, how are you? Good morning to all you guys, our friends in the States. <laughs> well, I just want to start by just quickly getting your perspective on this. You're there as well. And so um, I just tell us a little bit about what you've experienced and what you're feeling. Mm. Well, you know, one of the things that maybe, especially for those who have not been in this part of the world, it's hard to really comprehend how small Israel is. I mean, 90% of the population probably lives within a two hour drive from my house. I live not far from Jerusalem. If you go north two hours and if you go south two hours, you pretty much all the population of Israel lives within that span. So when you're talking about um, something happening in the Gaza border, it's very close to us. and. The, the fact that the population is also small, all of our, I mean, my kids are, are that age group, they're army age group. We are, everybody's involved. It's your kids, it's your brother, it's your brother-in-law, it's your, every, everybody has family members that are now mobilized. Uh, the whole nation is mobilized. And those who have not been mobilized are, uh, know that there are threats on the home front that we have to deal with on a daily basis. Um, it's not it's not far fetched to think in terms of neighboring villages that are hostile to Israel, that have the same motivations that the that Hamas and Gaza have, to uh, seize the opportunity to uh, to do further uh, chaos inside vulnerable villages in Israel. So even those of us who are not next to the Gaza border are now on on high alert. Um, you know, you're sleeping two, three, four hours a night. You're always on patrol. Um, you're, it's, it's not just the front, the front is here. And that, that's something that we all feel, the whole country. So while the, the government has been slower to mobilize and even the reaction of the army, there's many people asking a lot of questions, but a lot of that has been set aside because the nation is mobilized. The people have gotten up and said, what is needed? People are driving in their cars to bases to deliver what is needed to soldiers that call home and say, hey, we need this. We are missing this. They do. We didn't get that. That, you know, rain's coming down. We're, everybody is mobilized on this. And it's almost like the country is quicker than the military and the government apparatus uh, that's supposed to take care of things. So th these are things that are just, I mean, I, the stories haven't even begun to come out with regards to the horrific nature of what, what we're dealing with. Um, but this certainly takes the gloves off. There are no mm. lines now. This, when, when we heard about ISIS back in the day, that was Muslims against Muslims who weren't like them. These are the same type of people who got there got a hold of Jews it's far worse it's worse than Isis it's worse than what what we've experienced in the Middle East and Israel has been established in order to make sure that this does not happen to the Jewish people again and they may have hit us in a surprise attack but the retaliation is now mobilized in the country to make sure that when we hit back the hit is going to be such that they don't get up again. That's that's the sentiment of the nation. And the government won't exist if they don't follow through on that commitment. That's just the reality on the ground here. Hmm. You know, Daniel, you mentioned just how small uh, Israel is and how close in proximity all of you are um, to one another, which I think is an important point because here in America and in, in the West, it's uh, that's not really something that we think about. That's kind of an abstract idea. So I think um, making that point is important. I wonder if you can share a little bit about just some some personal anecdotes you might have heard in the, in the last several days, because I think talking about <clears throat> how people are impacted uh, is is really what makes a difference, and it's why I'm so grateful for the work of our CBN team there in Israel and in Jerusalem. Is you're able to put handles and and real real human stories behind what would otherwise be kind of an abstract. Well, I just went I, I kind of against regulations and against uh, the rules. I went down to the Gaza border <laughs> yesterday to visit our partners. I wanted to 
look them in the eye, give them a hug, and make sure that they knew that they had not only all of the nation standing behind them in their in this fight, they had friends from across the world that are praying and supporting them and love them and are that and it was a huge I mean the the guy that I was talking to, one of our partners down there, he couldn't believe that I made it all the way down there. He just couldn't nobody's going down there. It's a closed zone. And I saw I saw abandoned I saw this abandoned pickup truck on the side of the roads just shot to pieces, bullet holes everywhere, blood still on the floorboard of the truck, and a baby, uh, a baby seat strewn on the road right next to the, op- and the car doors are open, there's nobody, nobody touches, it's not, that, that's the scene. The scene is just devastation on, on levels that you just don't see every day. Uh, on the way home, I, I stopped by the base of my nephew, uh, where he's serving. He just got out of Kfar Aza, where the reports came out of all the, the just massacre that, that happened there. And he said the the bodies are booby-trapped. They didn't just kill and maim to beyond recognition. They can't get names out because they don't recognize the people. Mm. It's the, the atrocities are horrible. And he said there's still... He said, you, you know, we walk by a car that's still... The switch is still on... The car is dead because it's it, it can't just and and you have a, a dead Israeli in there still holding the steering wheel. He said it no nobody's touching the bodies because you have to have bomb squads to check and make sure that they're not booby trapped. This is this is what we're dealing with here. So this is not I, I don't want to even get into it, but the, they need to know that they're supported and loved out there, that, that, that this is the right fight, and that, um, that the, co- the government is going to follow through and make sure that this does not happen again. Yeah. yeah amen to that. We'll definitely, that, that is a big prayer point to include when we pray here to close it out in a few minutes. Um, you think about uh, you know, never again, as you said, and having to know, and uh, when you see these protests that are going on and people spewing, you know, falsehoods about this, it's very, very important that they hear your voice, that you speak up and let them know. It, it, it may not feel like it from afar, your posts on social media or whatever, you may feel like one person kind of crying out in the wilderness, but it will make a difference. Absolutely. Um, and people will feel those prayers. And so that's exactly why uh, we're doing it. And, you know, I want to mention here real quick a couple of things uh, while while we're on this. You can call 1-800-700-7000 and text terror victims to 71777. You can go to cbn.com slash terror victims. These, these are ways that you can help. And CBN, one of the things we're dedicated to doing is the praying, as I mentioned, but also physically tangibly helping. And one of the things CBN has done, which is quite remarkable, um, that I want to show you uh, a little package here about it, but we have helped uh, build bomb shelters throughout southern Israel because it's a it's a horrible reality that they have to live with down there that you could rockets could come in at any moment. So next to playgrounds and places where people congregate, you have to have these bomb shelters so that they can run into them. Uh, and so it's a very important thing, and it's something CBN is helping with, and you can contribute to that as well by helping and and, and contributing to CBN. So I want you to take a look uh, about a little bit more about these bomb shelters. Galit Kadosh and her family live on Moshav Yesha, one of many Israeli communities not far from the Gaza border. When a rocket is fired and red alert sounds, they usually have about 15 seconds to run to their in-home bomb shelter. During the last conflict, Galit heard the explosion only six seconds after the alarm. We love the area. It's good for us. But you have this situation. Again, you're under pressure. You're in stress. It's impossible to get used to this situation. Every red alert, you get a cardiac arrest and crazy pressure. Her daughter Ella saw her 11th birthday party canceled last week due to the lockdown. 
It doesn't matter how much you live with this and hide, you are panicked each time, and there's nothing to do about it. I, for example, am very, very sad because I had all sorts of fun things planned to do on that day, and it was all canceled. We adults can handle it. I run to the shelter, and everything's fine. I'm also stressed, but I know how to calm down afterwards. For the children, it's a little bit more difficult. The stress can be even higher when the alarm sounds and residents are away from home. Daniel Carlson says that's where CBN Israel stepped in to help. Well, I would say that probably the, the very top priority for any resident of that area is the issue of security. They know that this, uh, the issue of rocket fire, spur of the moment, very short notice. In just over a year, CBN Israel has provided 20 bomb shelters in strategic locations around the Gaza Strip. This one is next to a tennis court about four miles from the Gaza border. We were able to take bomb shelters and strategically place them near uh, bus stops, kindergartens, uh, community centers, swimming pools, anywhere where people are congregating and uh, the, so that so that they can get to a shelter at a moment's notice because that's the way life is built down there. Galit says the one placed in her community delivers a great benefit. First of all, thank you very much. It's not something we take for granted. We have many surprises. You're not prepared or you're on the way to some place and we have this shelter on the way. It calms the children and gives them security to go and play a little. Ella says even though the situation is scary, she's thankful for the protection. To run for a red alert is very, very stressful, but I also understand I have to deal with this because it protects me. The children in Gaza, they don't have a red alert. They don't have a shelter. So I have to say thank you that we have this. Although it's quiet for now along the Gaza Strip, residents have the reassurance that if or when rockets fly again, the bomb shelters are here to reduce stress and save lives. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Moshav Yesha on the Israel-Gaza border. And you saw Daniel in that package there. And Daniel, I mean, tell us a little bit about that and the importance of these bomb shelters. We're obviously seeing that for this weekend, but I mean, it's just crazy that that's um, a way of life down there and something that's actually needed. Um, well, basically, I mean, even like schools, the way things are designed, uh, down on the Gaza Strip, you have 15 seconds to get into a what we call a secure location if a siren goes off. Now, 15 seconds, if you can just think in terms of 15 seconds, all of the schools are built with small little areas where it's all designed with, like if you look at the map of how it, the school is designed, there's all these circles on the map so that no matter anywhere in that circle, boom, you've got 15 seconds, you can make it to this location. And then you put a, a, a protected situation so that all the kids no matter where they're at on the playground in the this that it's all accessible within 15 seconds we when we put a bomb shelter it's according okay if people are in a in a little community store or if they're in a uh at the even at the swimming pool community swimming pool or something like that they need a, a place where if a siren goes off they can immediately go and get to that's the way the whole all the villages are designed. And so, you know, it's it's hard to comprehend. I mean, you walk and walking through a school like that, it's like, oh, wow, every 15 seconds, I could easily run and get right to there. And so it's just, it's a different reality. Yeah, really incredible and um, unfortunate, uh, of course. Um, but I know, I know you guys obviously have a lot going on there. Chris actually had to go. So why don't we go ahead and we will consider all these things. We're going to close in prayer with the three of us, Daniel, Trey, uh, and you all at home. And we very much covet your prayers, as I've been saying throughout this broadcast. That is first and foremost the, the most important thing we can do as Christians, but you can also help tangibly through places like CBN, as we were just showing. Uh, you can actually help build things like a bomb shelter that will save people's lives. So, um, but let's go before the Lord one more time here in prayer, guys, to close this out. Obviously, a ton to be praying for. Um, and so, again, we appreciate it so very much. But let's go before the Lord one more time.
Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for, again, um, your goodness in, in the midst of chaos uh, that we know and we can trust that you have a purpose and that we can rely on you ultimately, uh, no matter what happens on this side of eternity, that that ultimately you are a God of justice and uh, a God of goodness. And, um, and so we trust in that and we lean on that today, Lord, and we do lift up the people of Israel, and as Daniel was saying, that that they need to know uh, that the world cares about them, that the world sees what they're going through, especially given the light of uh, light of the history of your people, Lord, and uh, the 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 persecution they've been through uh, over the years, and and so it's important to know um, for them to know that we see them, we love them. We're praying for them, and we just pray, Lord, that as we lift these prayers to you, that they would feel these prayers, that they would feel your presence uh, in the midst of this, and to give them strength to carry on uh, in the days and weeks and months to come. Lord, we know that to know you is is to know wisdom, God. We know that your word in James says that anybody who asks you for wisdom, you are eager to give it generously, Lord. And as Chris prayed earlier on in this live stream for um, the wisdom of our leaders, God, I pray for the, the leaders uh, of Israel, the leaders in the countries neighboring Israel, uh, Lord, even the leaders who are enemies of Israel, Lord, the, 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 the leaders who mean harm uh, and evil, Lord, they are still your image bearers, God, is as as difficult as that is to comprehend, Lord. I pray uh, that that people would come to Christ through this, Lord. People who mean evil, Lord, that their eyes would be opened, uh, that the blindness, the scales that are blinding their eyes would fall away, um, and that that you would be glorified in the midst of all this. We know, as Dan was praying earlier, uh, you are are always going to be glorified, even when we don't understand it. There's a plan, and you're sovereign, uh, and and you will find a way to shine a light uh, that brings glory and honor to your name, even in the darkest of situations, Lord. So I pray uh, for wisdom for our leaders, Lord, for our CBN team there in in Israel, God. Uh, I pray that you would give them wisdom, Lord, that you would give them the insight and the tools that they need to continue to cover these dark and heavy stories, Lord, uh, and that the believers there in in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, the rest of the the nation of Israel, Lord, uh, I pray that they would feel the presence uh, and the peace that only your Holy Spirit can offer. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just um, ask that you would uh, shine a light into the darkness. Lord, I, I ask that you would give uh, life and hope to those who have lost it. And Lord, I ask that you would thwart the plans of the enemy, that you would uh, really stave off and uh, put at bay those whose uh, mission is the destruction of the lives of others. Lord, we know that you've come to save and the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so, Lord, we ask that you would put a barrier, uh, not a man-made barrier, not based on technology and human wisdom, but, Lord, that you would bear, put a barrier of protection against those who come to steal, kill, and destroy. And, Lord, also with uh, the concerns regarding this, the, the possibility of Hezbollah opening up a second front in the north and the tension up on the northern border in light of the conflict in Israel, or even the po potential uh, conflict with, um, with the, other, the Israeli population within Israel. Lord, we ask that you would really allow, Lord, your peace to reign and that, so that those fronts do not open up. Tomorrow, Lord, is Friday. It is the day of prayer for Muslims. Lord, we know that uh, this often inspires even greater violence against those who are non-Muslim. So we ask that you would really rain down your peace, especially on this Friday, that you would not allow the enemy to incite and inspire uh, further acts of violence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, Daniel, well, again, appreciate you uh, spending a few minutes here to pray with us and to pray with uh, our viewers here at CBN who are faithfully watching and praying and, and helping as well. I appreciate all the work uh, that you're doing uh, there for, for the kingdom and, and for CBN and, and for the country. Well, I just, I again really want to thank all of the CBN, uh, those who stand with us that follow what's going on. 
that really make sure they're educated and up to date and that are standing in the gap for us over here. We so much appreciate it. We can't do it without you. Uh, you, we are. We may be the hands and feet, but you guys are the heart and soul. Okay, so keep praying. Amen. Well said. Thanks so much, Daniel. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. I'm going to roll through one more time ways you can help if you want to get involved beyond our prayers that we just offered. Now, call 1-800-700-7000. You can text terror victims to 7177, and also go to cbn.com/terrorvictims and. Also sign the CBN prayer petition, cbnpraise.com. Well, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate it. As always, when we hold these prayer events, we cover your prayers, as I said earlier. And so we're thankful for your prayers, your support. Uh, and um, we just uh, continue to lift up all of those to, uh, to the one who is able and hears all of our prayers. So thank you so much and God bless. We'll see you next time.